thank you for, uh, for, the, uh, for coming to my lecture. Today I am going to uh, present my fourth lecture of my five series lecture. I think the, uh, the title this afternoon, Structure Dependent Gram Boundary De uh, Deformation Factor at High Temperature. Particularly, I want to emphasize at high temperature. Because at high temperature, Gram boundary or interface play more significant role in deformation and fracture in polycrystal material. Because the atomic diffusion can be more significant. So deformation, which the, uh, the controlled by diffusion of atom, can be affected by grain boundary more significantly than at environment, uh, the, uh, at uh, ambient temperature or low temperature. This is the reason why I choose this title, particularly at this today. So, <coughs> as you can see from this slide, when we deformed the polycrystal material or polycrystal sample or metallic material or ceramics under stress at high temperature. Grain boundary, for example, migration takes place. So boundary migrate. And also at boundary, two grain relatively slide to each other. This is a grain boundary slide. If I put a scratch at the beginning, so from displacement of those scratch, you can recognize how much sliding took place during the formation. But uh, in this lecture, I'm going to talk the effect of the remnant structure or cavity. Particularly, as you can recognize, if you look at it carefully, individual boundary, <coughs> each boundary doesn't create similarly. Some boundary show the very significant boundary sliding, but other boundary not like this. So depending on the boundary structure, from boundary boundary to the, to the boundary, such as the migration or sliding, uh, the, the uh, behavior quite different. So this is a structure dependent Grain boundary deformation, or even the fracture. So, so just briefly, I want to show the outline of today's talk. Firstly, I want to discuss interaction between dislocation with grain boundary, dislocation from grain interior during uh, the deformation under stress location from gray interior impinge the grain boundary and then some interaction takes place. So what happened during high temperature deformation? And then so effects of boundary character structure is very important. And then because of such an interaction, original boundary structure can change or modify during deformation. So again, boundary sliding or boundary migration can change. And then, particularly structure dependent grain balance sliding, using a bicrystal sample is more very simple. We can recognize such a structure dependent very easy. Even the dy dynamic migration under stress can be different from static grain boundary migration without the stress. Right. And most uh, important topics I want to emphasize today is the effects of grain boundary structure transformation. Because when we increase the temperature, of course, crystal, uh, crystalline material consists of regular array of atoms. But if we increase the temperature, 
atom can vibrate depending on the level of temperature. So if we increase the up to the very high temperature, atomic fluctuation becomes quite significant. In, that, in such situation, atomic arrangement or brain boundary atomic structure can modify to increase the entropy of the, the boundary. So this can cause the grain boundary structure transformation. As a result of this, boundary sliding or boundary migration can drastically ch change at some critical temperature. So this is the grain boundary structure transformation. Of course, most of the metallurgical phenomena associated with grain boundary can occur at high temperature. So to recognize such effects of grain band structure for transformation is very important. But to my knowledge, unfortunately, not many people realize such importance of grain band structure transformation. So for example, when the grain boundary segregation is discussed in the steel or other material, but normally segregation can occur at high temperature because segregation needs diffusion process. So in this case, but unfortunately, when we discuss effects of boundary structure on segregation, amount of segregation, not many people discuss or emphasize the effects of boundary structure. Uh, transformation. So I want to emphasize the importance of the Grenban structure transformation today. And then on the basis of such knowledge about a structure dependent grain boundary deformation or fracture, how can we engineer grain boundary to produce high performance, high temperature material, for example, or which is a very resistant to fracture or a very high performance creep resistance for a high temperature. So firstly, improve with the creep strength or oppositely, how can we engineer the grain boundary to give the brittle material or workability? or super plastic. This is the second sub-topic. And then, when we use material, polycrystal material, at high temperature, of course, in the ordinary, ordinary environment, like uh, air, oxidation occurs. So because of uh, oxidation, particularly in polycrystal material, grain boundary can be preferentially oxidized. And because of the intergranular oxidation, as you know, the oxidation-assisted brittleness occurs. This is a very serious problem in engineering material, high temperature, used at high temperature. So how can we control such an oxidation-assisted intergranular brittleness? Actually, we have already succeeded in the engineering of control of oxidation. But anyway, as I already mentioned at the, my first lecture, nowadays we can, this is an optical microscope, taken by the, the, by opti, uh, the, taken by the ordinary optical microscope, but this is boundary character distribution determined, analyzed by modern orientation imaging microscope. So as you, if you compare the two pictures, you can clearly recognize, particularly in the dark area, if you look at it carefully in this area, from the opt optical micrograph, we cannot clearly recognize here is a boundary. But because 
orientation may be similar. So in this case, by etching of the surface, we may be image contrast similar. So, but anyway, by orientation imaging, by using a OIM, we can clearly recognize the difference in orientation of the, the two, between the two. So we can determine the boundary type like this. So even the, if you look at the carefully around the depth, maybe here the green boundary, because low angle boundary surrounded this one, so there's no big difference. So maybe dark area separated like this. So, so nowadays, we can determine the character of individual boundary existing in real polycrystal material. Right? This is a case of molybdenum polycrystal sample produced by annealing from deformed single crystal. So initially, there is no grain but after deformation and annealing, we can produce such a so anyway, what happened at high temperature <coughs> under the, the polycrystalline sample uh, but kept under stress? Already, as I mentioned, boundary migration or sliding occurs. Finally, due to the sliding ass assistant, such an intergranular fracture occurred. So particularly at the high temperature, intergranular fracture occurred more serious and more significant. So creep deformation, creep fracture, in other words, it's called the creep, the, the, the embrittlement. So uh, like this. So generally speaking, when the polycrystal material shows the more severe Intergranular fracture, material become more brittle. This is a general tendency. Not only high temperature, even at room temperature. So to control the, such an intergranular fracture at high temperature, it's very important to develop high performance, high temperature material, which is used at high temperature. But, uh, from this micrograph, you can easily recognize what type of boundary can preferentially break for a surface. As you can see, oh, uh, stress axis is horizontal. So you can easily recognize R denote indicated random high energy boundary, and sigma or L low angle boundary or special coincidence boundary, sigma boundary. So as you can clearly see, random boundary can be a preferential site for fracture or slide. That's such a low angle boundary, uh, low sigma boundary, a very resistant to slide like this. So there is a clear difference between different type of Other thing, rather interesting thing. During the deformation at high temperature, both grain boundary migration are sliding simultaneously occurred. Not independent. So in that case, for example, if original grain boundary here, so I put a scratch across the boundary, and then during a high temperature material, oh, this is the, the iron pin alloy. So during a creep, high temperature creep deformation, boundary migrate to this position. And also, also and also moves to right there. But simultaneously, Boundary can slide right. So, due to the sliding 
already the, you know the mechanism. I, later I'll discuss in more detail about the mechanism of the uh, crack formation at bound due to the uh, sliding, granular sliding. In this case, for example, a certain period, here that must be the end band. And then if the band slides like this, crack are formed because this part receives the more higher normal tension. This part is the shear direction, but this is the So, frame boundary can play under the higher normal strength like this. So, crack formation occurs like a period, some period. Because this shows Grain boundary do not move the continuously. In this case, boundary moves at with some delay time like this. So not boundary moves the So as a result of this, finally, if we continuously observe, final fracture occurs. So such a very complicated intergranular fracture occurred in the other polyglycine due to the simultaneously occurring the boundary migration and the grand side. So maybe if you look at fracture surface to understand the mechanism, sometimes it's not so easy. If you have to, uh, if you have taken into account contribution of both migration and slide. Anyway, this is a, one of the examples. So maybe we can work out that some model. What kind of mechanism of free integral fracture and migrating or sliding time. So, but anyway, under the stress, by frame boundary migration can occur differently from the without condition without stress. So of course, activation energy can be different because of the different of, me of mechanism of migration at the static migration. Even for the under stress, we call the dynamic migration under the stress. In this case, this is the recent work by the William Manning, uh, Willing of the, in Aachen. They published the, the interesting work. If we determine the activation energy of or the migration, dynamic grain boundary migration, aluminum bicrystal, depending on the misorientation or boundary type, boundary uh, the activation energy, quite different. Because they explained mechanism of migration. So it's different between uh, depending on the misorientation. So if some of your interest in print is this paper. But anyway, another important issue which we should discuss the, for the deform effects of boundary on deformation and fracture at high temperature is continuity of slip, slip continuity. For example, if you carefully look at the micrograph of the deformed material, even in polyester material, at the grain boundary, some slip trace can be continuous, but some are not. Why? So this is very important. For example, in this case, 
about nearly 20 years ago, the Dr. Lin and the Prof. Large of Cornell University reported. Now he is in Singapore, National University, Prof. Lee. Using a nickel pipe crystal, whose boundary character was already characterized, well, they observed, studied continuity of sleep line across the body. So, depending on the type of part. As you see, the, here is the boundary. So, sleep trace is continuous like this, in this case. But, some case is not like that. If you care. So, of course, you can easily imagine what the physical mean, what physically mean if sleep line is continuous across the band. The role of grain band as barrier to dislocation motion is well known. So we discuss, often discuss the effects of grain size on flow stress or fracture in connection with such knowledge. But unfortunately to my knowledge, even at present time, not many people take into account effectiveness of grain band at dislocation barrier. So without or with consideration all such effects, maybe the discussion can be quite that different. So now we have to discuss the effectiveness of brain power at the dislocation barrier to dislocation motion. Of course, I, as I'm going to know, such an effectiveness strongly depends on boundaries. So anyway, they determine sleep continuity at percentage as a function of the sigma value of coincidence power. So with decreasing the sigma value, we can get more ordered structure. Done. So obviously, this is the higher energy, more random. But uh, when sleep occurred by screw dislocation, in this case, sleep continuity decreased with increasing sigma. So uh, when the boundary character becomes more lambda, sleep con continuity decreases. But if the oppository in the case of such a low single boundary, most of the slip line, slip frame, is continuous. So there's a very But when the dislocation are of mixed type, in this case, there is no single effect, almost no effect. Why? They explained when that is the location meets a grain boundary, it so interacts. In this case, that is the location have to dissociate into grain boundary structural dislocation. And then another new that is the location is the convert from the pump into the other. Agree. In this case, depending on the boundary character, some remaining residual parts of grammar dislocation remain. So depending on the type, the type of boundary, character of boundary, such as the remaining residual stress, 
and also then magnitude of Burgos vector. Actually, the, the Burgos vector for the low sigma band is larger. As I mentioned, size of the super lattice of coincidence boundary increase with decreasing sigma band. So the large uh, the magnitude of the Burgos spectrum can be more continuous at the same time. This is the case. Like this. So again, as without such an interaction, boundary with a different character show the different behavior. For example, one of my colleagues, or my co-worker, now Professor Kokawa, published more than 25 years ago. If we observe the Grenban sizing behavior as a function of time, for the different type, this is the coincidence boundary, this is the random boundary. As you see, the, as a coincidence, oh sorry, random boundary, Boundary sliding can easily occur like this. But uh, for coincidence boundary, sliding occurs at initially, but uh, saturated. So slight hardening occurs. For example, in the case of random grain boundaries, we really saturate. Gradually, but the, if you compare the level, like this. That's a very good uh, question. But uh, of course, always slight hardening occur with different magnitude. So this is the less the slight hardening occur at high. Is that it? Of course, like right. Not the linear one. But uh, again, in the case of interface boundary sliding, uh, Professor Takasi uh, already uh, reported in the case of an interface boundary sliding, alpha, beta, plus case, sometimes not always saturate, even the acceleration depends. So maybe depending on the difference of the, the mechanism of sliding, such a behavior can be done. Again, why such a difference can occur? The same <coughs> Here the triple junction and this boundary is as you see the random boundary. This boundary is sigma 13 coincidence boundary. So during a high temperature deformation, dislocation moves and impedes the grain boundary. Like this. But if you compare the two boundary with different at random boundary, you can see smaller number of line image. But here at coincidence boundary, you can see many line image of process image. Actually, at random boundary, lattice dislocation can absorb very easy compared with coincidence boundary. Because that is this location. Do not have a Burgos vector around boundary plane. So absorbed in the green boundary, such a process needs diffusion control crime and light mechanism. So diffusion around the boundary or around the boundary very important. But uh, in the case of coincidence boundary, <coughs> because of the, the higher order of atomic the, the, the green boundary structure. The normal green boundary diffusion very difficult compared to the other. So this is consistent because lattice's location cannot absorb the low sigma boundary. This is a very important. So at high temperature, 
when there's a boundary, can be a effective site to dislocation at the dislocation barrier to stop the dislocation motion. So from this observation, you can easily expect if the polycrystal material contains such a high high density of such low sigma band. Maybe dislocation cannot pass easily across the boundary. That means maybe creep strength <coughs> can be improved by increasing the fraction of such a boundary. If exactly such evidence was obtained easily. This is a new method for improving high temperature creep strength. So just I, I'll show you something. But anyway, as I mentioned before, during the deformation at high temperature, boundary grain bound structure can change because by absorption of dislocation from initial boundary structure. So with for example, if we plot amount of sliding, the same for the aluminum boundary, as function of the whether the, uh, for even for the special boundary, the, we often describe like this. This is the, the for the, uh, the coin, specific coincidence boundary with different single value. If this value, the Brandon, uh, Brandon ratio, Beyond one, this can be a random boundary. But the below this, this is the coincidence boundary, the category. So up to one, this value, as, you, as I mentioned, coincidence boundary is very difficult to say. But beyond this, as you see, the boundary sliding become increasingly easy. This is exactly rather complex. So this means grain boundary structure can modify during the deformation by absorbing lattice silicon. Actually, other work have already observed, uh, observed by using a transmission electron microscope. So 1970 to 80, there are so many work on the interaction between dislocation and grain boundary or published reported, for example, in Aftermath or a few months later. If you look at around the end of 1970 to 80, you can find many details. For example, one of this uh, type of uh, often, if we, by using a transmission electron microscope, with annealing the temperature, uh, heating the temperature. When at fat temperature, dislocation in the boundary disappears. That means that when the dislocation can be absorbed by grain boundary. So that's the, there is a critical temperature. So Professor Shubindraman and Boris Sturman, Russian scientists, now they, they are both are very active, the leading scientists in the field of grain boundary. Published about if we plot the such a critical temperature at which dislocation image at the grain boundary disappear, normalized melting temperature as function of sigma value, as you see for low angle boundary or some low sigma boundary. This means that is its location. Cannot be absorbed easily, even at the melting temperature, like this. But with increasing the sigma value, that means the more randomly ordered, uh, random boundary, such a critical temperature decrease. That means 
with the increase in a sigma value, boundary, Oasis boundary, can absorb lattice dislocation more easily. Finally, maybe random boundary. So there is a very significant difference depending on the, the boundary character, or even among the consensus boundary. So very dependent. So now, next, I want to discuss about <coughs> the effects of Glen boundary structure transformation in connection with the Glen boundary sliding or migration. To study the sliding, the most simplest way is using a bicrystal sample, which contains only one boundary in the sample. So this will be zinc bicrystal. In this case, boundary aligned perpendicular to the the surface, and then we change the misorientation and artificial by growth of bicrystal. So here is the misorientation. So this means, in this case, one O bar one O axis in this line in the boundary. So this is a tilt bar. Basal plane uh, arranged symmetrically to the plane band. Like this. So maybe you can slightly give up. But uh, and then before the flip testing, we scratch, we put the scratch on the surface, and then after some the flip test uh, time, we can measure the displays. This is the amount of sliding. So, as I already emphasized, at high temperature, boundary structure can change. This idea was already pointed out even nearly 40 years ago by Edward Hart. So he mentioned two-dimensional phase transformation. At the beginning in this paper, he discussed, he discussed in connection with the boundary segregation. But the later in this paper, not only segregation, even for the even under pressure boundary structure transformation count. This is a more general concept. So because of such a phase transformation at the boundary, boundary behavior can drastically change at certain critical temperature or critical pressure. This is again very interesting. So in our case, how does such a boundary structure transformation can affect Gremban sliding behavior. So at different temperature, we measure amount sliding as function of delta angle. Actually, so many, not only three different uh, temperatures, more uh, at many times. And then if we plot the sliding rate as function of the temperature, actually one over for a rather low angle boundary, we can get a straight line. The same temperature dependent. But for high angle boundary, 40 degrees tilt boundary, in this case, here is a bent or change of the temperature. So depending on the misorientation angle, the TC can change particularly for 54 degree misorientation angle, we can see the critical temperature very close to melting temperature. So if we plot this TC, critical temperature, as function of the tilt angle, we can get a such a curve. So such a change 
occurred at this temperature. This means low angle boundary for the low angle boundary, such a transient temperature must be beyond or up to melting temperature. But in the case of high angle general boundary, that's the rather if we describe the, this melting temperature at homologous temperature about 0.7 beyond 0.7 or 0.8 of the melting But most important finding is this. In the case of this boundary, actually this boundary very close, this orientation very close to the sigma 9 coincidence boundary. This sigma value is smallest value for this location axis. So in this case, like this. So in this case, critical temperature drastically increase up to no point. So this means the thermal stability of Gren boundary physical. So low angle boundary or such a low sigma coincidence boundary has much higher thermal stability. So very stable until high temperature. But other random boundary with low high energy boundary they are not, do not have the higher thermal stability. So boundary structure can rather easily change from low temperature structure to high temperature structure. So this is very meaningful. When you want to heat to the treatment of your sample at certain temperature, annealing temperature, expecting some effects of grain bounding or segregation or grain growth or area. In this case, even if you characterize grain bounding by most of the more than OIM, at room temperature, if you anneal beyond a certain temperature, boundary structure can be different. Have you considered such a possible effect so far? Like this. So we have to take into account such an effect of boundary structure on the boundary related phenomenon. Of course, if such a boundary structure transformation occurred, boundary energy can change. Because of the such change, segregation of impurity effects of segregation also can be different. For example, in the case of sliding, if we produce a, the two different bicrystal sample with different purity, but the misorientation angle is the same. In this case, for the degree, but critical temperature shift like this. Because amount of segregation strongly depends on boundary energy. So such a knowledge is very important. And oh, again, another thing about the dynamic migration during a deformation. If we stress the cycle at high temperature. Often fatigue can occur so the cycle. In this case, boundary migrate like interrupt like this. So correspond to the number of the cycle. But depending on the type of boundary, such a special boundary cannot migrate. Okay. And then, but at certain period, such the number of mobile boundary can 
パーセンテージをインモーバイルインモーバイルさっきインモーバイルグラスケルで雑にモアバウンダルキャンマイグレイズアサーブミグレイズデステンテクションオールノスコレスポンプレイそれは。So now, within the five minutes, I briefly mention how can we use such a basic knowledge for g r e e n b o u n d a r y engineering for a high temperature m a p So, firstly, as I already mentioned, if material contain, polypital material contains a high fraction of special boundary, what happens? Even for a single, the, in the case of bicrystal sample, if the bicrystal sample contains the special boundary, creep deformation becomes more difficult. Like this, in the, this is a sigma 9 boundary. But、uh, even at a higher boundary, c o n t a i n the high and random boundary, creep deformation occurs more easily. So from This knowledge, what happened? We introduced more special boundary in our engineering material, like a nuclear reactor and alloy 600.、Right? This is very important for a nuclear for a reactor.、Yeah. As you see, if that material contains special boundary, coincidence boundary 10 to 15 percent, creep deformation occurs rather easily. But if we increase this percentage almost double or more, more than that, creep deformation becomes more difficult. So we can improve, drastically improve the creep in this. Just for the same material, but just by introducing the designing or engineering group. This is a really new. Unfortunately, this knowledge has not been used. Why? As again, same thing. If we product steady state r a t e as function of special boundary, single boundary, as you see, p r e p a r e d as p e c i f i c like this. So, this is a really new technique. So, next. By controlling the brain boundary, we can improve the workability at high temperature by introducing a super p l a s t i c even for brittle material. As you know, the aluminum lithium alloy is very good to at room temperature. Because actually, this material is very promising material for the aerospace or another the, the,、uh, structure. But what happened during the deformation in connection with the brain boundary structure? We observed, we analyzed the brain boundary microstructure during the superplastic deformation. So, of course, by tensile deformation at constant strain rate, work hardening occurred. Show the peak stress and then decrease, and then steady state appeared for a certain period and then fracture. So, in this case, more than 250% elongation w i l l s But what happened with the g r e n b a n d m i c r o s t r u c t u r e Up to peak stress, we observe most. The random boundary about 37% or 40% up to, up to 
but beyond this, the percentage of random boundary decrease or uh, increase drastically, almost double. So already I mentioned random boundary can slide very easy. So as you know, the mechanism of superplasticity is remember slide. So if we introduce more random boundary material can be formed by sliding more easy. So, so you can easily expect with the increasing the percentage of boundary, you can get a more, much better the superplastic performance. But unfortunately, there is some optimal microstructure at the Rembrandt microscope. Because boundary sliding also assisted cavitation at triple junction, like this, or higher. So we have to compromise. We have to produce optimal boundary microscope. So of course, random boundary can easily break by diffusional mechanism or sliding assisted mechanism. But, uh, in such case, in the case of superplasticity, if we introduce new bound or low angle bound, at the random bound to interact the connect by increasing strain rate. Actually, we can get more elongation because, as I showed before, if we keep continuously deform at strain rate without doing anything, maybe this cavitation occurred right there and fracture. But if we change the <coughs> strain rate, introduce the dislocation or a low angle boundary and connect, interact, let the boundary interact with the dislocation. Boundary character change. And then maybe the crack propagation. So as we expect, if we have some basic knowledge, we can predict some behavior. So, depending on such, we can model such a uh, deformation, superplastic deformation, actually occurred in the real point of the uh, Now the time almost I they used up. Just I mentioned about the, the oxidation. Again, <coughs> oxidation occurred high energy bound, but not low energy bound. So if we control the grain boundary microstructure in the material, in this case nickel iron alloys, by in this case by rapid solidification and annealing, we can change creep resistance also, and then we can change the oxidation behavior from the surface, depending on the grain size and grain boundary character distribution. So what's the best grain boundary microstructure for oxidation resistant control? It's opposite case is this. So if we reduce the fraction of random boundary and use the grain size, Oxidation penetration cannot occur the deeper in the sun. So this is a simple idea of brain boundary engineering. So not only such a the behavior also wetting is also important for high temperature fracture because sometimes for the, the low temperature, melting temperature phase, the, the, the liquid fine and then wet the boundary 
and within enhanced fracture interval. So also weighting behavior depending on boundary type with So anyway, if we have obtained basic knowledge, even at a high temperature, we can use such a basic knowledge for engineering of boundary type. For high temperature or for specific environment. So I think boundary engineering is very promising for future material design. Thank you for your attention. This is my first session attending your talk. Unfortunately, we couldn't come for the previous one. The very main question now is how we can implement that, how we can design the type of the grain boundary we want. I mean, inside the material. I already mentioned that on the second question. That the, uh, but uh, even here, I just briefly mentioned in this case. For example, in this case, of course, from using an initial same sample, yeah. we rapidly solidify, in this case, uh, the ribbon sample at different so solidified rate. Uh, speed and different annealing So such a combination is one of the possibilities. Processing, because we have to know the detailed processing. Gram boundary, microstructure, gram boundary processing. So, so far, last two, in two decades, we have been deeply involved in such a processing of gram boundary. Rapid solidification and other processing. Of course, some mechanical processing is standard technique many people use, but it's not sufficient. So recently, we are now using a magnetic field to control the grain boundary fibers. Last five years, that topic become increasingly the important. So maybe at the end of this year, the special issue of grain band engineering appeared in the script I I have invited you to do some paper to do the grain band engineering by analytic application. So you can do it. But anyway, we have to start such a new processing route for the grain band and micro During your talk, you mentioned that Thermodynamically, thermodynamically, yeah. Yeah. because the boundary has extra energy. 